So there, this is the Bible of soccer, not soccer. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how Croatia can win against France and about how beautiful this board looks like. I remind you that I'm going here with no teleprompter, no guidelines and no master edition. Recording everything from my cell phone and I speak like this, a little bit slow so I don't lose my train of thought. Okay, this is mainly an Spanish speaking YouTube channel, but I have a playlist that you can look ENG. Okay, I stopped making some English videos because I'm focused in Spanish speaking right now, but I decided to make one video for the final match for the FIFA World Cup Russia 2018. Okay, so we're gonna talk here about France first, how they play, because we already have a video about Croatia in English. It calls Croatia uh, the pairs of three. Okay, and in the case of France, we only have the Spanish version. So we wanna talk a little bit about how uh, France uh, plays. So. What is the best system currently in football or soccer? What is the best system? Zinedine Zidane, right? He won three Champions League in a row. Okay, the video in Spanish is called France, what was first? Francia que fue primero? Who was first? The Champs or Zinedine Zidane? I don't know because I don't follow either Real Madrid or France. I don't follow those, those teams, okay? But when it was the time to, actually so years ago when Zinedine Zidane arrived to Real Madrid and nobody knew how his system was I, was, I had a lot of people writing me. Can you explain Zinedine Zidane's system by, for Real Madrid? So I started looking at it and I explained it. And after I explained it, then everybody understood. And then everybody started talking about this, and I'm serious. And then I have to watch France. And I discovered that they use the same system. It's exactly the same system. So, system. So I don't know who came first because I don't follow either team. So I don't know if this system is the Champs idea or if it is Zinedine Zidane idea. This is very important, believe it or not, because uh, when you create a system and another coach copy it, the other coach is gonna lose, okay? So, Zinedine uh, Zidane has won three champion leagues, so I think that he is the one who created the system. And um, France, they lost the final match in the Euro, 2016 so I don't think the chance is the one okay but I'm gonna explain here how they play so basically they use a 4 4 2 right they use a 4 4 2 I'm talking about Real Madrid Zinedine Zidane Real Madrid right now is the same system. <clears throat> okay. So what Real Madrid does? What Zidane does? Cristiano Ronaldo, Benzema, Bell. Okay, I'm talking about the second Real Madrid, not the third, not the last one, the previous one. Okay. Oh, but he played 4 4 2. And he has three attackers. Oh my god. Okay. So when they attack, they will attack with 4 4 2. And when they defend, where they're going on D, they're going to play 4 3 3. That doesn't make any sense, right? That's why I have a lot of people asking me. And everybody was saying, what Zinedine Zidane is doing? Why well, he's trying? He's winning. He's trying to win three champion leagues in a row. Hello. So 
when he attacks, he only used two attackers. So he's coming and he attacks. Maybe he scores, maybe he doesn't, the team. So then the other team goes or they try to score again, but this is one try, okay? So let's say Cristiano Ronaldo and Benzema, one try. In the second try, Benzema will go here, Cristiano Ronaldo will go there, because remember that Cristiano Ronaldo started playing there when in the beginning of his career and he plays here for the national team most of the time. Sometimes he plays here and very few times he plays here in the middle. Like for example, against Spain, Cristiano Ronaldo play here because Spain has a dead spot in the middle. Okay, I explained that in the other videos in Spanish, uh, but uh, that's why the coach from uh, Portugal, he put Cristiano Ronaldo there in, against Spain, okay? But we're talking about Real Madrid right now. So Benzema will go here and Bale was here. And he will now come here. And now they're gonna go with the second attack. So Benzema is there and now Cristiano Ronaldo I'm there. Second try, maybe they score, maybe not. It finished. Now they're gonna go again. So Cristiano Ronaldo will go there. Okay, well, he's there, sorry. So Benzema and Bell. Now Benzema goes there. Cristiano Ronaldo will come here and Bell can stay there. Doesn't matter, okay. Benzema usually, he likes to, Cristiano Ronaldo usually here, ben, uh, Bale usually here, Benzema he likes to be here, okay? This may change, but this is the most important part. So now they're gonna try again, third try. Okay, so in the first try, it was Cristiano Ronaldo and Benzema. In the second try, it was Cristiano Ronaldo and Bale. And in the third try is Bale and Benzema. Okay, maybe that's not the order that I'm say I say it. That I said it, but I'm just writing it now. Okay, so in the first try, one couple. In the second try, a different couple. And in the third try, a different couple because they rotated when they attack. So what is the point of doing this? The point is that before you start a match, all defenders and the defensive midfielders, okay, let's, let's put two, okay? It can be one, it can be two. They are explained how every attacker plays, so they can take care of them. Okay, oh, Cristiano Ronaldo plays like this, okay, okay, and he's gonna be on your side, okay, okay, I will take care of him. But if you change this couple all the time, these defenders will go crazy. Because they have to memorize now three different players, how they play and recognize when the player is gonna come to him and they're gonna be rotating all the time. Okay, it may sound stupid, but this is the system and it works. Okay, Guardiola, no, it's in the past. Mourinho, no, it's in the past. Zinedine Zidane, system is the current best. Okay, this is the system and this is the same system that the champs use. Actually, I was joking when I say I discovered that maybe Zidane was the creator of this because he won three Champions League. I was joking, I don't know, maybe it's the champs. So maybe tomorrow he just win the World Cup, okay? <clears throat> now, they are from the same country, so they talk all the time. I'm pretty sure that Zidane wants 
uh, France to be the champions. Okay, so it doesn't really matter who invented this system first because they used to play together, they're from the same country and keep going. Now, what is the problem with this team, with France? Benzema is not in the team and he already knows the system. Okay, so Croatia have a chance. What is the other problem with France? Ribéry is not in the team and he's a good player. At least from the bench, he can be on the bench. When people don't, please don't stop the video and go to another channel, no. Because when I say Ribéry, people look at me like, are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I know how to win matches. So, uh, why Ribéry and Benzema are important in the team? Because Benzema already knows the system. And Ribéry, it could be a good player for substitution. Because why France lost the final match in the Euro 2016? Because Griezmann was very tired. Okay, Griezmann played all the matches. He was very tired. France won against Iceland 5-2. And I'm not sure, I think... Uh, I think Griezmann uh, played the whole match. Maybe he was substituted at the end, I don't know. But he played almost the whole match, if not all match. He was very, he didn't need, France didn't need him for this match. 5-2. You don't need this guy to play this match. You need to give this guy a rest. But they use it. Why? By the, because they don't call Benzema and the other guy for reasons that I don't care. Okay? No, that I don't care. They play in Real Madrid and the other guy plays in Bayern Munich. That's the only thing I care if I'm the coach. Okay? Okay, now, Griezmann is going to be tired, he plays here, Mbappé is going to play, he plays there, and Giroud is going to play. No. 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 Yes. Okay, so Giro is like the Mansukic from uh, France. He's not there to make goals. He's not there to score. Okay, he's there to pressure. Okay, but because they have to do the rotations at some point, he needs to go to score. So if I'm Croatia. I have to act like Giro doesn't exist. Okay, don't take me serious, please. Okay, because otherwise he's gonna score. Okay, but you don't have to worry too much about Giro. He will miss one goal after another. Okay? So you just have to lightly take care of him. Lightly. You need to take care of Actually, you need to take care of Pogba, not even Mbappé. You need to the best, the most important, the most important player to take care of tomorrow is Pogba. I'm gonna explain that later. Okay. So France, they attack like this, but when they go in defensive, they do this: four-three-three when they defend. So what's gonna do? Griezmann usually is there. He's gonna come there and he's gonna help defending always, all the time. And he usually is gonna try to go to the middle because he has a very good passing and exit. So he wants to be in the middle when the, his team recover the ball. Okay, they don't want Mbappé, Mbappé maybe can be there helping the right back or something. 
and Giroud is going to be there pressuring. Okay, but Giroud really is there just to go to the aerial game. That's why he's there. Okay, just to headbutt everything that comes to him, everything that comes around. Okay. Okay, what happened with France? They play against Australia. Okay, France was the best team in the first date. Okay, they play against Australia. And I have the English version from the Australian team. It calls Australia behind the ball or something like that. Okay. And I explained there how to beat Australia. Peru did that. Okay, Peru did that, they changed the attacking from one side to another and then score. France didn't do that and that's why France looked really bad because they didn't do that. But in reality, France was the best team from that date because they beat, they beat it Australia by implementing their own system okay and that was really difficult to do against Australia okay I explained that in one video so you can go to the video and watch that I'm not gonna explain that again because it's gonna take me like 15 minutes or 20 minutes then they always try to implement their system the only time this team uh, was flexible a little bit, it was against Belgium. Why did what they did against Belgium? Okay, they always play like this. They always defend like... Uh, uh, they always defend. They always gonna do going D with Chris Mango back pretty much to the middle. Giro is gonna come pressure and Mbappé is gonna come pressure but the only guy who is gonna go completely on D is Griezmann that's why tomorrow he's gonna be so tired that Croatia may win then in the only match that they did something different it was against Belgium that they defend everybody was defending Okay, it was 4-3-3 defending. Okay. Why they did this? Because they found a crack in Belgium. Belgium, the coach from Belgium, he copied Guardiola. Okay. Guardiola is the coach from Manchester City. And he has the Bruyne, right? He plays there. And sometimes he plays there or there. But Guardiola say, no. You are going to play here. And I'm going to move you from here to here. Okay, the Bruyne? Yes, Guardiola. And then the coach from Belgium did the same thing but he copied he didn't know he doesn't know why the broom was moved from there to here or from here to here he doesn't know but the champs noticed and france put all their players there in the back and the Bruyne have to move from here to there. Very easy, right? It looks like I can do it too. Because I don't see any blue magnets here stopping me to go there. So France eliminated the Bruyne. Belgium was playing with 10, 10 players and one very talented player is out from the equation 
just because I put all the thing, all of these guys in the fandom. Okay? They made the Bruyne useful. Okay? <clears throat> Useless, sorry. Then, uh, that's the only time when France did something different. So maybe tomorrow, I don't know exactly what the plan will be, but the way of winning, I will explain it, okay? Okay, now we're gonna talk about Croatia. And later on, we're gonna go back to France. So Croatia, Croatia plays like this, okay, in the last match they play here with Brozovic, let me see if I can use this one for Croatia, Brozovic played there, right, it was not uh, Kamiric. Kamiric, it was Brozovic. Okay, and this is Mansukic, and this is Rakitic and Modric. Okay, so what Croatia needs to do tomorrow? Subasic, I don't like Subasic. Dominic is the best goalkeeper from Croatia. It's not Subasic, but Subasic has more experience as they use it, and if they take out Subasic from the team, the press is gonna come after this guy. Okay, but if I have to, if I'm the coach tomorrow, Subasic to the bench and I will call Dominic and he will be the goalkeeper. I know this is not going to happen. Okay, this is impossible unless Subasic get uh, injured, it's not gonna happen. Okay, he already was injured. And I think uh, the other, the second goalkeeper is not even Dominic. It's the other guy because they use it for the third match in the group stage. So I don't know exactly if Dominic have any chance of goalkeeping tomorrow. Then yes, I know maybe in Croatia he has been doing a good in the penalties, shootouts. Yes, I know, but Dominic is better. Dominic is better. Okay, the second thing, <clears throat> Brozovic. I think Brozovic should play tomorrow again. Okay, or Kovacic, but I'm not sure about Kamiric. But what is most important is Rakitic. He's moving a lot in this direction and in this direction. And he cannot keep doing that. Rakitic needs to come to this line. He needs to help these guys here. Okay, because we already have Modric and when we have Brozovic it's even worse. I don't want three organizers to be together. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, and if Kamiric is gonna play tomorrow it doesn't matter. I don't want two organizers to be together. I want them to be as far from each other as I want, as I can. So Rakitic in the last match, he was coming here all the time. He was coming there all the time and he needs to be here with these two guys when they're going and attacking. Okay, because what is the best thing about Rakitic? His long pass changing from one attacking side to the another one, and he's very precise. And if I have this guy here in the middle all the time, I'm losing that, okay? He can do a pass there and there. I don't want that. I want to use him in what he's best, changing the ball to the other side, okay? Okay. I need Brozovic. What happened in the last match? against uh, England. They were playing, ah, uh, they were playing like this. Let's put it like this. 
and Modric was coming all the time to start organizing the attacking and the two guys from England were there with him all the time and that is why in the first half Croatia didn't do anything but in the second half the coach realized what was going on actually during the first, first half I was asking myself why Brozovic is even playing they're doing this ground so during the second half it was Brozovic who was coming here and what happened? Only one guy came to him. Because when it's Modric, it was two guys. Okay? But then it was Brozovic coming to the back. And then Modric was there. He was with two guys. But it's okay. When you are there, having two guys is normal. Any other player will have two anyways. But not here. So they were killing Modric. In the first half so in the second half they sent Brozovic to pick up the balls okay yeah sometimes mother was coming yeah I, I know okay but that's match situation but the main player coming from the ball to the back it was Brozovic in the second half okay let's keep going you can play Kamiri he can play anyways Okay, that's not really important. Okay, the most important thing tomorrow is uh, Rakitic trying to go there. <clears throat> what is the best thing about this team? Uh, Croatia, their defensive, defensive system. Okay, they have a very good defensive system. When in the Euro 2016, I thought Croatia will be the winner. Okay, for me, the final was Portugal-Croatia. Okay, I knew uh, whoever would win that match, it will be the champion. Okay, <clears throat> Croatia didn't win it because they took out Modric, right? They took out Modric and then very hard to win it. That's why now Modric run all the time. So the coach never is gonna think that he needs to be substituted, okay? Because in the Euro, Modric was substituted and Portugal won the match, okay? Okay, I think it's still, anyways, uh, I think that Croatia in the Euro, it was a stronger team than this one. Why? Because they had the Serna, right? Serna is now retired. And Croatia, they lost a lot in attacking with him. Okay, but Versalco is doing a good job. And <clears throat> the team is better in defending now better than the euro so maybe they kind of compensated that a little bit so we already have talked about uh, the defensive system before in a video that i calls croatia croatia the pairs of three basically teams come here okay let's say for example argentina i made a video uh, it was an statistic that Lionel messi he didn't shoot to the goalkeeper in the match against Croatia. I explain in a Spanish in a Spanish version why. I'm gonna explain it now. Okay, so Mansukic is here and he tells you, you come here, you are an Argentinian guy. Hey, hello Mansukic. Hey, hello. You need to go this way or this way? No Mansukic, I want to go in the middle. No, I am in the middle. You need to go this way or you need to go this way. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm going this way. Or, okay, okay, I'm going this way. Okay, and once you go that way, if you decide to attack that way, you can never come to this way any, any, again, ever again. Unless you come all the way back 
and you talk to Mansukic again. Oh, Mansukic, I regret. I didn't want to go that way. I want to go this way. Okay, good. But once you go this way, you can never go to that way unless you talk to Mansukic again because Mansukic is not there to score, to score goals. He's not there for that. Mansukic is a defensive midfielder that is there in the attacking side and you have to choose this side or this side okay if you watch the match against Nigeria Nigeria never could change the attacking from one side to another and the best team we played against um, Croatia was Denmark because Denmark I think they knew about this and they put all the players in the same side. Denmark put all the 11 players in what, whichever side they were attacking to. Okay, but the rest of the teams, they don't do that. They still keep their guys over there. And Croatia is here with everybody, or not everybody, but they're gonna be pressuring you three guys are gonna are gonna be pressuring you okay i explained that in that video that you need to watch croatia the pairs of three i don't gonna explain that again okay but what happened with messi what happened with messi against croatia so mansukic tells you you go this way or this way and after that they break the field in two equal sides, this side and this side. And Messi was there. Messi was in the border. Okay? <clears throat> so they eliminated Messi. They made they made him useless. The same way France made useless Kevin De Bruyne, Croatia made Messi useless. Why? Well, two reasons. First, the system. And second, again, again, Argentinian coach. He did the same that Belgium coach did. Belgium coach, oh, Guardiola moved the Brun here. I will do the same. Argentinian coach, like all the Argentinian coach in the past, during the Messi era, they have done the same. They have copied Guardiola without knowing why. Because Messi plays here. And Guardiola moved him there. As a secondary striker, or as a false number nine, whatever, however you wanna call it. Okay? So Argentina coach put him there and he doesn't know why. Only Guardiola and myself knows why, okay? So, <clears throat> he's there. And Argentina, Croatia only let you use one side or the other one. And if you are in the border, when Argentina is playing in that side, you are in the border. You're not going to get the ball. When Argentina is playing in the side, you are in the border. You are not going to play with the ball either. So that's why Messi, couldn't make a try to the goalkeeper and also he only made a few passes okay that statistics says that Caballero the goalkeeper from Argentina made more passes than Messi in the match against Croatia and it's because this system okay that I explained in that other video that I mentioned. Okay, so the best team that played against Croatia was Denmark, Argentina, and Nigeria played really, really bad against them. And Russia, they didn't play uh, so bad, uh, but they still fall a little bit in the, in the using the half. But what happened with, uh, what happened with Russia? They knew that they, Croatia they doesn't have a number five. Well, Croatia is here. 
that they have. And number five, a defensive midfielder there. And after they go th through Mansukic, they were trying to come to this place, okay? Which is the weakness of Croatia, okay? The thing is really hard to get there. Okay, but they tried and they succeeded one time. And the second goal, okay, came from a, from a free kick or something like that, okay? Cross pass and somebody scored the goal. Ah, Fernandez scored the goal, I think it was. So, that's how Croatia plays. Now, we come back to France. Okay, so we already talked about Mansukic. He's not there to score the goal. He's just there to, to do a defensive uh, work, defensive job. And he tells you that way or this way, then some people will go and keep you in this side or the other one. But now let's want to talk about France again. So France, we have Mbappé. And we have Pogba. We have Griezmann. And we have Umtiti. And this is all we need for now. We only need those four players. Uh, okay. Oops. Okay, so Mbappé is there. Griezmann, he's gonna be tired tomorrow. Okay, he's a good player, but he's gonna be tired tomorrow. I think he will be tired. Okay, we have three players left. We have Mbappé, and we have Pogba, and we have Umtiti. Umtiti is the crack of this team. So Croatia needs to go to Umtiti all the time. But in the last match against England, Pogba was the best player against, uh, sorry, against Belgium. The best French player against Belgium was Pogba. It doesn't matter what other people said there, it doesn't matter what you read in the internet before, okay? I'm telling you, it was Pogba. Pogba was taking care of Umtiti's back after the goal. I think he will retire tomorrow, okay? But it doesn't matter. I know for sure that Griezmann is gonna retire. I don't know about Pogba, maybe. The only guy who is never tired in France is gonna be Mbappé, from the good ones. Mbappé will be good tomorrow. So, we have one good guy here, good player, very good player, Pogba, and we have Mbappé, very good player, right? But, one of them is in one side of the field, and the other one is in the other side of the field. So, unless, if I'm the, if I'm the champs, what I will do tomorrow, I will move Pogba from here to here. So I have all my best players in this half. That is the half that Croatia, Croatia will let me use, okay? But if Pogba plays here, I have only one good player and one good player here. And on top of that, I have uh, the worst player is behind the one good. Okay, yes, Griezmann is a good player, but I'm telling you that he's gonna be tired. Are you ready? Mention that Giro, he's not there to score goals, okay? And I'm not sure if France know this, because they, because of the rotation system, Sometimes Giro actually needs to score, okay? But he missed a lot of score, okay? Giro, Sterling, uh, Mansukic, those are the players that, well, Mansukic and Giro, they miss a lot of goals, a lot. Okay, in the case, Mansukic is different. It's a little bit different 
because he really and he scored already so okay okay so basically we have one good player here and one good player here so if Mbappe is moved here and Griezmann here this is not good because I still have Umtiti in this side so the, the, smart, the smart move for the champs it will be to move Pogba there okay so they can attack using this half all the time where the strongest players will be but as I mentioned France play against Australia they play against uh, Peru the uh, Denmark it was like you don't know if it was a serious serious match or not they play against Argentina they received three goals from Argentina okay so that tells you a lot and they always tried in those four matches okay three because Denmark you never know if it was serious or not but in those three matches they try to implement their system they didn't go through the cracks and against Belgium they kind of went to the crack because uh, they did the same that Mourinho did with Guardiola in 2010 in the Champions League everybody goes to the back and I will kill Guardiola's game that is starting organizing from the back Okay, but with Croatia they cannot do that because they have a lot of organizers. They have Rakitic, they have Modric, they have Brozovic, Kovacic in the bench. And if they start with Kram, it's still good. And they have Versalco on one side. So they cannot do that. I don't think it will be terrible if they do something like that tomorrow. Okay? <clears throat> and so this is an advantage from Croatia okay because if they move if they don't move Pogba there Croatia will have the advantage and I think Pogba it won't be moved because the champs tries to implement their his system okay France they haven't shown me that they are able to adjust or willing to uh, adjust to the opponent no they want to win their way okay so i think croatia has a chance but the secret will be uh dominic that won't happen but i'm telling you i'm telling it because i need to uh rakitic he needs to move that way not to the middle not to the front that way second Third, don't care too much about Giroud. Okay, he may score tomorrow. It doesn't matter. I'm just telling you that don't care too much about him. You need to care about uh, Pogba, mainly. Okay, tomorrow he is Pogba. I don't think Mbappé either. Okay, but you can try. But you don't worry about uh, this guy. I'm four attack as much as possible and umtiti okay and uh, Joris the corner the corner to the second post second pole if the corner is from here second pole this is where you need to put your ball Okay, that's the weak point for Juris. Okay, so how can you win? I don't know exactly if Umtiti is going to stay there all the time. So, you need to try that your corners get kicked from here. Okay, so let's say this is Juris from the right 
the right of your is or from the left of Croatia left Croatia Croatia so what do I need I need to make corner kicks from this side as much as I can not from here because the first post is good for your wrist that's not his weak point his weak point is the second post so if I go here if I kick the ball from this side of the corner and I try to send to center where Umtiti is your wrist could save the ball. But if I kick from here and I go to the second post, your wrist weakness. And if I go to the second post, Umtiti is there. So corner kicks or free kicks from here that I can center to the second post all the time. Okay, so I was having some technical problems and I have to cut the video But I think I made my point about the corner kicks and I already made my point about uh, If Pogba doesn't move there and all of that. So I pretty much gave you four choices Goalkeeper That's not gonna happen. I know um, Rakitic should go there move in that direction second third go with on tt all the time and fourth the corner kicks that i already explained okay so that's cover pretty much everything anyway i was about to finish the video uh, so if you like this video give me a thumbs up you can share it so more people can watch it and if more people can watch it i will start making videos in english more often okay but i stopped because it was only a few views so I'm focused now in the Spanish version and uh, if you want to learn Spanish or if you want to wait for this kind of videos from time to time you can subscribe uh, it's no problem you can follow me on Twitter sometimes I have uh, useful information there that I, that I can put in English sometimes and I also have a donation page, page if you decide to help me with that and it says goodbye to you, the Bible of soccer, not soccer.